Math falsifies naturalistic mega-evolution, part one. Math falsifies the core argument, the core theorem, of naturalistic evolution. One, the core of naturalistic evolution is that random chance creates mutations, i.e. variations, that are then used as the raw material for natural selection to improve the fitness of the species. Random chance is the creative agent. It creates new genotypic and new phenotypic changes. Natural selection is the destructive agent. It destroys any of the changes that random chance offers for consideration that reduce the fitness of the organism. Natural selection destroys such random changes by killing off the organism that has those changes. Two, based on the above, the key mathematician and one of the founding fathers of the modern theory of evolution, Ronald Fisher proposed a natural law of evolution that stated that given random chance mutations, the fitness of a species will always increase over time due to the action of natural selection. He derived that law as a theorem assuming an equal and symmetrical distribution of beneficial versus harmful mutations. Three, however, extensive research has shown that the distribution of beneficial versus harmful mutations is not equal and symmetrical. Instead, the distribution is very heavily biased towards harmful mutations. Experimental measurements indicate that less than one in a million mutations is beneficial. The vast majority of mutations are harmful or lethal, and some fraction are neutral. Four, when we add in this experimentally determined distribution, math shows that in biologically realistic situations with asymmetric mutational distributions, the fitness of the species declines over time in general. My comment, this means that mutations and natural selection do not work in real life to create the entire biosphere. Scientific article, The Fundamental Theorem of Natural Selection with Mutations, William F. Basner and John C. Sanford, Journal of Mathematical Biology, Volume 76, pages 1589 to 1622, 2018. Quote from the paper listed above. Caps are ours for emphasis. Fisher did not know the molecular nature of mutations and incorrectly assumed that mutational effects, positive and negative, would be effectively symmetrical and balanced. This assumption was profoundly incorrect, and so the results seen when using a symmetrical mutation distribution have no correspondence with biological reality because the premise underlying Fisher's corollary is now recognized to be entirely wrong, Fisher's corollary is falsified. Consequently, Fisher's belief that he had developed a mathematical proof that fitness must always increase is also falsified. We next modeled Fisher's theorem with the newly arising mutations having a more realistic distribution. For both the bad and the good mutations, we employed the same gamma probability distribution, but we used a deleterious to beneficial ratio of 1000 to one. This is a very generous ratio in light of many studies. The result was that fitness declined continuously. The net effect of the new mutations was very consistently deleterious, and the upward pressure on fitness due to natural selection was not sufficient to reverse the ongoing mutational degeneration. What we have discovered is that, contrary to Fisher's claim, continuously increasing population fitness is not an inherent property of life. Mutations by themselves drive fitness down. Natural selection may or may not be able to reverse this genetic degeneration. As numerical simulations become more comprehensive, hence more realistic, net gain in fitness seems to become increasingly problematic. Apart from theoretical and mathematical reasons for doubting the biological validity of Fisher's central thesis, that fitness always increases, there is now also abundant empirical evidence against his thesis. For example, Ecological observations consistently show that Fisher's thesis is not true and that as a general rule, a natural population's fitness is static. Essentially, all natural populations have substantial genetic variants, yet most such populations do not show continuously increasing fitness. Furthermore, extinctions and near extinctions happen all the time, which are clearly antithetical to Fisher's thesis. In addition, the genetic degeneration of certain organisms has been recorded within historical timeframes. Lastly, Many population geneticists have expressed grave concerns regarding possible conditions where human mutational degeneration overwhelms the stabilizing effect of natural selection. Five, so we see that when we add in experimentally determined distributions of mutations, the math shows that in biologically realistic situations with asymmetric mutational distributions, the fitness of the species declines over time in general. And this means that mutations and natural selection do not work in real life to create the entire biosphere. Conclusion, one, harmful mutations are a million times more common than beneficial mutations. Two, 
natural selection cannot overcome these deleterious effects for small populations and low reproductive rates, as is the case for complex creatures. Three, this results in increasing deleterious genetic load from generation to generation that leads ultimately to extinction. Four, so natural selection is a stabilizing force at best for such populations. Five, neo-Darwinism does not have the ability to create higher taxa, such as kingdom, phylum, class, order. Six, neo-Darwinism is limited to adaptation of species inside a genus or family, thanks to Michael Mote. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.